What's happening, Adventure Box Podcast Nation? Hey, this is Zach Edwards with Historical Conquest coming to you live. Uh, here's the great thing about this. This series that we put together has actually had great responses. So thank you so much for everyone that's supporting us. The great responses are in the support of letters, of the viewership, everything. So thank you for doing this. I hope it's ex uh, exciting and enjoyable for everyone. But today is going to be even better. Now, as we get started coming into with American history, coming into um, the things that were happening in more modern days, that's when the stories really started to come out. And that's when instead of just giving you a blanket understanding of what a people were, instead of being able to focus on certain uh, aspects or certain people that were there, because again, like in when we're doing uh, ancient civilizations, it doesn't really matter because as we come into uh, a civilization, there's not much writing. Uh, the ancient Aztecs didn't really have enough writing to give us stories about certain people. The, the people in um, Asia, in Africa, in Europe, all those ancient civilizations, until we get to the time of like the Romans, most of them won't have these intricate stories. But today is going to be a story that's been told for t uh, a long time, ever since the, 1600, the start of the 1600s. And this is the story of Jamestown. Now, there are stories within Jamestown that you can find in the curriculum. I'm going to go over the basics of it, but if you really want to get the individual stories from each of the individual people, go to the curriculum. You'll be able to read each person's um, part in it. And so as we get closer to such as the American Revolution, or even actually the French and Indian War, then the American Revolution, and so on and so forth, you're going to get individual stories and be able to learn about these people, their passions, the things that, that really got them involved in whatever part of history that they were attached to. Like just to this morning, I was uh, reading about John Hancock, um, editing one of our, uh, let's see, John Hancock, during the American Revolution, um, writing down or editing the curriculum that's coming through so it can be printed. And then also, uh, let's see, Caesar Rodney. These are a fascinating stories that you wouldn't get in a regular classroom at your regular middle school or high school. Or you wouldn't get just by opening up, uh, wanting to learn about history. You'd actually have to search out the, these different parts of history. And the certain people. So we focus on the stories that are not usually told. Now, in Jamestown, we're going to go a little bit back, actually. We're not going to start in Jamestown. Let's go back a few years. Okay, so what happened back in uh, 1590? Actually, let's go back. 1587. You remember we talked about Sir Walter Riley back in England. He set up an expedition to go find the first settlement in the United States, which would have actually been in North America, the New World. There was no United States at the time. Okay, so in 1587, they leave. And 1590, they start up, well, I guess 1587, they start up the colony called Roanoke Island. This is in North Carolina. Now, it was established and led by John White. White returned to England later that year to gather more supplies. And when he returned in 1590, everyone was gone. The settlement was destroyed. And there was three letters carved into a tree, C-R-O. And they could only think that they actually meant Croatoan. C-R-O-A-T-O-A-N. But there's no saying because it was just a small amount of a word. Now, again, that was 1590 when that happened. And so ultimately, the colony picked up ship and set, set back for England. So then in 1606, King James sent out another expedition. There were three ships, the Susan Constant, Godspeed, and Discovery, all set out from England well, actually, no, sorry. The, the petition went out in December 20th, uh, 1606, but the actual expedition went out in April 24th, uh, 26th of 1607. 
So the ships landed in Cape Henry, which is right in Virginia, and then they explored out there. So I'm going to bring you up a picture that I have to show you. Now, North Carolina, this would have been Roanoke Island. So south, by a, a fairly good amount, if you look at it from our perspective, a few hundred miles away. But if you look at the perspective of those from England, they were actually floating somewhat uh, close to where that position was. Now, as they came into Jamestown, or this area, they found an island. Well, yes, it was an island. Um, somewhat of a peninsula, but we'll just say island for this this, app, this case. And they decided to set up their first settlement that hopefully would stick around for a while. Okay, so they got, get into this island and they build this fort. So the officially it was officially founded in May 14th of 1607. What happened? Within a few months, well, actually right away, they met up with the other tribes that were in the area, the uh, Poetan. The Poetan were a very uh, substantial tribe in the area. They were a very strong tribe <clears throat> in the area. And they were also uh, manned by a, or uh, led by a very strong leader. Now, some of the warriors went out in December, found a hunting expedition with Captain John Smith, which you might know if you saw the movie Pocahontas. So what happened to John Smith? Well, according to records, now not all records, and some people actually dispute this account, but according to the records that were kept in letters from John Smith to uh, King James and so on and in other people, he was captured by the Poetan, Poetan uh, warriors, and he actually was about to be executed. Now, his other companions were already executed. He was basically the last. And why was he the last? Because he was the official. The Poetan wanted to show how strong they were and that they weren't going to take anything from the English and that the English should actually uh, fear them. But there was one person in that mix that was daughter to the chief, to Chief Potoan. They actually took the name of the, the tribe as Chief Potoan. Her name was Pocahontas. And according to accounts, she actually was able to stop the execution and save John Smith. Now, that was in December. He was finally returned January 2nd. Before that point, though, he was dragged when he was captured and anyone else that was kept alive. They were dragged through the villages to show the trophies of the Poton warriors. They were so proud of themselves. So at this point, Pocahontas stopping the execution was a little bit of a slap in the face for a lot of them. Those that wanted the English to, to be scared of them and, and to die. Pocahontas had a different way. She actually believed in peace and was able to talk to her, her um, father to doing that, to giving peace to the English settlers. So John arrives in January. What else happens in January? Well, soon after his arrival, a fire starts up in the colony. No one knows where that fire actually started. There's uh, speculation of where that uh, fire started, but no one really knows. And it destroyed a lot of the supplies of the English. So in go a few a little bit ways out um, others the ships have already basically left for England so in September of that year 1608 Jay, uh, Smith is actually made the president of Jamestown council here's an interesting thing um, now his actually actual hope <clears throat> was to actually fix the relationship to improve the relations with the Potoan now Confederacy. The Confederacy is when different tribes all uh, come together in order to defeat a certain foe, the English. Now, October, just after he becomes the president of Jamestown Council, another supply ship comes with more settlers and more provisions. So there's a lot more people there. Okay, I'm going to skip forward just a little bit. So come to 1611 a lot of the colony is actually suffering 
they're having a lot of issues, uh, military discipline. Um, they're having issues with the colony that basically in 1609, they had what was called starving time and disease and famine wiped out a lot of the settlers. And then there was also the conflict with the Native Americans at that point. Only about 60 of the 500 settlers who had arrived were still alive. 60 made it through that starving time winter. Okay, now here's the uh, important things. They In Jamestown, they basically believed in this. Everyone helps out, everyone does their part, and everyone benefits from it. Well, that basically went downhill. People weren't putting in the effort. People were arguing with others that weren't putting in the effort. There was a huge uh, conflict inside the settlement itself. There were a, a few settlers left, and then they had additional settlers come in, in 1610, sorry. And at that point, uh, they were having a really big struggle in keeping the settlement together and keeping control of it. What happened? Sir Thomas Dale. Everyone should know his name. Why? Because he took Jamestown and he said, you know what? We are now going to have a new system, new set of laws. These are going to be strict laws and everyone gets to own their private land, their own private land. So it wasn't just the rich that got to own land. Everyone got to own their land and everyone produced. If you didn't produce, you didn't eat. They actually increased production dramatically and even morale because everyone wanted their own land. Everyone wanted to be free. They didn't like the system they had before. So they created this new system and all of a sudden the people were happy. The people were working. Those that didn't eat, I don't know what happened to them. Some of them probably starved or they actually wised up and started working as well. Those that could not be held. This is something that's interesting. Those that were not able to do stuff, such as people that were injured, the elderly, they were not actually made to work. There was actually a system for them. And so that was not held against them. But others who were able bodied people had to work. Now, oh, it's, yeah. So that was Sir Thomas Dale. What happened next? John Ralph came in. And what did he do? He brought tobacco from the Caribbean. The ship that was supposed to come to, to Jamestown actually went down to the Caribbean first and actually shipwrecked there. And they had to build a new ship and sail out. Well, during this time, John Ralph began to farm tobacco. Then he took that tobacco and brought it up to Jamestown and it became a bumper crop. It was the first, first profitable export in the colonies at this time. Now again, Jamestown was one of the only real colonies that were out there. That was 1612. What happened next? I, I, I can't keep going. There's, there's so much more. You'll be able to read it in the, um, in the paper. But this is significant. For all those that think that Pocahontas should have ended up with John Smith, it didn't actually happen. Pocahontas was actually captured in, the ninth, uh, in 1613 on April, in April. And now well, some accounts say that she was held ransom. It wasn't actually that she was held ransom. So if someone tells you she was held ransom, they're lying or they're misinformed or just ignorant. So what actually happened was the Poetoan Confederation was actually attacking the English. Well, what happens when you have a, a civilization or a group, a large group attacking you? You do basically anything you can to save yourselves, to defend your land. So what do you do? You grab the first person that comes into play and hold them hostage. That's just one thing that you could do. If there's no way of talking to them, you have to do something. They thought in their own mind, again, looking at their perspective, not my perspective, their perspective, Pocahontas was a Native American girl who continued to come in and had a really good relationship with those in the settlement. The settlement actually liked her. She had free reign going in and out of the area. Well, it is that point that they took her captive. Yes, they did take her captive and ransom. But here's the thing. It wasn't ransom for money, for supplies. It was for peace. Yes, 
So I don't exactly consider that a ransom. Peace is not exactly something that you ransom. They wanted peace between them and the natives. The native, uh, the Powhatan Confederation. Okay, Confederacy. Sorry, Confederacy. What happened during this time? Well, po uh, Pocahontas was actually um, with one of the people that she knew at their house, staying with them, though she was not allowed to leave. Again, they were keeping her so that they could actually keep stay safe. During her captivity, she converted to Christianity. She was taught by the family. She liked it. She accepted it. And she actually took on a different name. She was no longer Pocahontas. She was Rebecca. Now, the next year, she actually started up a relationship with John Rolfe, the one that brought in tobacco. And they actually got married. Now, this actually brought peace between the English settlers and the Potowan Confederacy. This was known as the Peace of Pocahontas. This was a gift given by Pocahontas from all the way, way back when they first came to Jamestown, when um, uh, John Smith was taken captive. Again, 1607 is when she saved John Smith. That was 1607. And now we're talking about 1669 years later. So she married and then she traveled to England to be introduced to King James the first. Now, everything was going great until they were heading back to the Virginia and she died on the trip. Now, that being said, I'm going to leave it there. There's a lot more that's happening, especially, again, we're going to be coming up to 1619, which we're going to talk about some sometime soon. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to mention it now. 1619. What happened in Virginia? Okay, so there was a Dutch ship that was um, captured and the privateers brought the ship to Virginia. It was full of slaves or those that were meant to be slaves in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, you could have slaves. But in Virginia, you couldn't. According to the House of Burgess, which actually had its first representation July of, thir uh, of um, July 30th of 1619, they said no slavery. We could have indentured servants, which they had from England. The indentured servants came in. They worked off their bill in order to get transportation here. After a certain amount of time, they were able to be given their own land and work for their own living. No slavery there. What happened when the Africans came over? to the United States. Well, funny enough, they were traded as indentured servants, not slaves, making the beginning of the African presence in Virginia, though. So there were indentured servants who were from Europe. There was indentured servants that were now from Africa, both of them. So during this time, it would take nearly 20 years before the first uh, African was actually allowed to be permanently enslaved and 30 years before the uh, they were actually able to be uh, kept in slavery. And a few years after that, um, like, so let me go a little bit more. In about, I think it's 1641, the courts actually decided that, and this is not in Virginia, this was up north. I can't exactly remember exactly where it was. But they were, the, the law coming from the British said that a Native American sorry, not an African who's coming to America could actually be made a slave and could be sold as a slave for the times of criminal activity. If they were a criminal, they could be enslaved permanently. Come to 1950, there was a indentured servant from Africa who gained his own land. And then when one of his slaves said that he had served out his time, the uh, this uh, African indentured servant came back to the courts and said, no, he's not done. He needs to stay with me and I want to actually make it permanent. Well, he lost and the servant was supposed to go free. Well, that guy still appealed it. He was a very wealthy African um, indentured servant, now uh, freed person in uh, I think Virginia. But he decided, you know, I'm going to get this appealed. 
And he had a lot of money. He had a lot of influence. And he was able to talk the courts into permanent making, permanently making this one indentured servant into a permanent slave. That was the start of slavery in the Americas. And that is when the slave trade started coming in and selling slaves on the open market in certain colonies. Now, certain colonies would not allow slavery. So the British were actually ones that were pushing it. Now, remember, it was the British that also had to push us to end slavery because they were trying to correct all the things, all the wrongdoings that they had done in the past. So this all being said, uh, it's a really interesting information uh, piece of information when it comes to Virginia uh, and Jamestown. OK, so let me show you. So Jamestown was basically on the edge of the uh, river. Um, this was the can't remember the river. OK, but uh, so it's set on the side of a river and it's <clears throat> actually that's sorry. That's right. This is how I was saying it's somewhat of an island, but it's not. It's a, actually a peninsula. So uh, Jamestown, this island, you actually came through this narrow neck and into the city. This is the James River, again, after King James. And again, this is Jamestown after King James as well. This is a, another rendition of the, uh, of the colony itself, the settlement when it first came. <clears throat> this is the kind of buildings that they were in. This was basically mud pushed up against wall uh, with timber in between to keep it together, like a skeleton. The mud was like the skin of the body. And then every, everything on the roof was called a thatched roof, which is basically bales of hay or bales of straw put together and laid out so that it could cover, which did not make it waterproof, but at least made it water resistant. This was actually one of the, the churches, the early churches that was made in here as well. Anglican, because again, English was uh, the Church of England. Now, before I get to that person, so this is the base of the story of Jamestown. What else was happening during this, around the same time that Jamestown was being established? Well, Mr. Henry Hudson. Mr. Henry Hudson, whoops, was a well established, well liked person in England. He was born in 1565 to. 1570, somewhere in between there. They're not exactly sure exactly where they, he started or where he was born, when he was born. But either way, say it was 1570. 1607, he went out for his first voyage. So, and this is, now, he does actually go down and visit some of the uh, settlements down below. But he actually, uh, you know what would be better if I had a map. And you know, It'd be nice to have a map that was actually reliable. As I keep telling you, internet maps are horrible. This one I actually found was set up by Google uh, with another organization that probably put it together. But this is a Google map of Henry Hudson's adventures. His first adventure, again, actually for the Dutch East India Company. Oh, no, no. First, sorry. The first one was uh, out of England. Oh, no, no. It was the uh, Muscovy Company. I'm trying to remember where Muscovy was from. I think it was the Dutch company. Now, I'm actually finding this out right now. It was for which company? Country. Okay, while well, that's propagating. The first voyage he took was actually nearly due north. He was trying to find a way to India coming the, through the other side of, of uh, Europe and Asia. But he thought he could actually go straight over the North Pole. Well, it was actually an English trading company that was founded in 15, uh, 1555. There we go. Okay, so English company comes up here. This is why it's in, in green. It's not for the English uh, country. It's for a company for the English. He goes due north and, well, basically freezes over and barely gets back. Okay, so little is known about that early adventure. But the next one is a northern passage also for, um, uh, let's see, I think this one was for the Dutch. He comes over and he tries to find a northern passage up here and makes it as far as just above where it would have turned into Russia. So that area 
That's as far as he made it. Oops. Zoom in. Okay. So he made it past Sweden, past Finland, and into Russia on his second voyage. Well, the third voyage, he actually starts working for the Dutch East India Company. So I think the second one was actually, sorry, I, have, I should look this up. I think it was also for the same group that he did it for the first one. So first voyage, English. Second voyage, English. He's not very much trusted anymore by the English. So he goes to the Dutch. And at this point, he works for the Dutch East India Company because he says, I made it this far. I can make it further. And we can actually make it around Asia by the time that Eng uh, by the time that winter sets in. Because both, actually all three times, he's hit by winter. Sorry, the first two times, he's hit by winter. By the fourth time, he hits this land. Now, at this point, no one knows exactly what he was thinking. Whether he thought, you know what, there's no way I'm actually going to make it around this body of water, of, of uh, this build, sorry, this land. So he turns around and he comes back. Well, this is also when he tells the Dutch, you know what, this isn't going to work. We need to go a different direction. And so that's what he does. He turns around and floats down. <laughs> he comes around, floats down, and actually, just so you know, the second one is actually right here. I mix up these two maps. So the, the, the so the second voyage, he makes it as far as uh, just above Russia, like I said, um, but different places. He actually made it a little bit further the second time than he did the third time. The third time he decides, you know what, this isn't working out. We're going to turn around and go back. And so he goes back, again, still working for the Dutch East India Company, and he decides to go to the New World, to America. And he arrives down here first to Nova Scotia, and then makes it as far as New Jersey, <clears throat> and then up the Hudson River. Again, it's called the Hudson River, of course, because Henry Hudson founded it, and he mapped it out, so they gave him claim over it. So he basically laid the Dutch claim over this area. <clears throat> so what happened when he got back? He gets back to England, or sorry, he gets back to, yeah, I think he actually went back to England, and then the, sorry, and then England has an issue with him. They say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> we're going to take you captive and we're going to take your information because you're English and you should be doing this work for, for England. He says, wait a second, wait a second. The Dutch get word of this, that he's coming in and come over and one, bail him out. But two, they also demand the, the uh, information that he gathered, the maps that he made. So there's a big conflict between the Dutch and the English over Henry Hudson. Finally, they went out, they get their stuff. English, uh, the English get their stuff as well because they actually got all of that information before the Dutch was able to take it back. <clears throat> so now what happens? So now he's sent on another, uh, another expedition. This one is actually backed by who? The English. So again, First route, England. Second route, England. Third route, the Dutch, because he hadn't found anything and they were getting discouraged by him. He floats over to, to the New World, comes back, lands in England, and is taken prisoner. But then released and given a commission by the English, uh, including Sir Thomas uh, Sky, Smythe, who you'll read more about. Okay, now, Sir, uh, let's see. So Henry Hudson, again, not knighted because first the first two expeditions for England wasn't very pretty for him. The fourth one may have been, but you're going to see what the twist is. Also, the fact that he was taken captive and then probably most likely was said, hey, if you want to stay out of prison, you've got to do you got to work for us and you've got to go back to the new world and map some more of it out. So that's what he does. He maps it out. What does the Dutch do at this time? The Dutch are smart. And they know exactly what they want to do. They want to go to where Henry Hudson had actually founded. And we're going to go in this next month when we talk about New York. But let's go back to Henry Hudson. Henry Hudson leaves on his fourth voyage in 1610. So 
he travels from England all the way back to northern Canada. So he actually, so he went under Nor Greenland, under Iceland, and into the Hudson Bay, or what we call the Hudson Bay. This is a great place. He's finding all these things, but it's getting late in the season. So he's trying to find a northern passage above the New World to find Asia. But what happens during the winter? What happens is it gets cold. Now, he sails on the ship Discovery. Remember, we talked about the Discovery uh, ship Discovery. It's one of his, uh, let's see, second voyages, first voyage. He went off on the Discovery. So, this being said, the Discovery takes him all the way over here and then turns winter. So, a lot of people are mad. They're trapped in the ice in the winter in northern uh, I think it's Quebec was the area that he's in northern Canada. So there's no settlements. There are Native Americans. I don't know if they interacted with them. There's no record of that. So but he's stuck here until the next uh, next year when the ice breaks up. Hudson Bay gets completely covered in ice during parts of the, of the time. Now, not completely, uh, mostly covered by ice. So Henry Hudson is stuck. Two, uh, sorry, 1611 it comes, the spring. It's very harsh winter. Many people died. Hudson crew mutinies. They set Hudson, his son, and some of the loyal crew members adrift in a small boat because they're actually on their way back home. They were going to go back to England. And they make it as far as the neck where the Northern Passage basically starts and find out that Henry Hudson did not have friends on the boat. He did have some, but not enough. And they were actually sent off with him on a small vessel. And basically, uh, Mar Maroon, Maroon, Mon Marooned, Marooned, Marooned on uh, Canadian soil. And it's never been heard from again. So his fate is actually questionable. Uh, there's other people that were actually part of this. If you want a really good book, um, we wrote another book and it was basically on the early, early Americas past this point up to um, the French Indian War. And it talks more about Hudson's actual voyage. In the curriculum, there's a good amount of stories, but the other one gives you a few pages of his story because it's actually meant with meant to be stories. Okay. So that was the life of Henry Hudson. He was lost at sea, being that he was mutinied and sent back. His men were captured in England because they didn't return. And word got out there was a mutiny, but none of them actually faced uh, prison time. They were all released. Okay, so that was 1612. And remember, we went through 16, what, 1607 was when... Uh, Jamestown was founded by 1611. That's when uh, Sir Thomas Dale created the new system, the new law within Jamestown, where everyone could have their own ownership. And production went up and morale went uh, went up as well, actually. <laughs> okay, so those are two very interesting stories of people that came to the new world and set things up. Now, if you want their actual stories like more in depth, Go to the curriculum. You'll see a lot more there. We have pages built around teaching about their lives and what it meant for just not just the colonies, but for the European countries as well. So that's basically it for the day. I'm going to leave you with that information and just tell you, it is so much more exciting to learn about history when you're learning about the actual people. And so we're going to be bringing you new stories of new people every time we meet on this podcast. So stay tuned for those. Those are really exciting. And then afterwards, you can do your own research on their lives and find out more stories that are built around who they were. So thank you so much for joining me on this great day. It is a great day. It's sunny here. Hopefully it's sunny there and not too hot because it's getting into winter, but it's the perfect temperature. Thank you so much for joining me and we will catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. If you have any comments or questions, Add them to the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, actually.
Take care. Bye.